Hello and welcome to our podcast. This is Voice in the Wind. Today we are beginning a series on the topic Dragon Slayers. We will start by identifying what these dragons are and who these Dragon Slayers are. The origin of this topic actually comes from a prophetic word we received during one of our prayer summits. We have these prayer summits every last Saturday of the month, every month. And while we were praying, one of us, a disciple of mine, got a prophetic word. And as I was getting the prophetic word, I was getting the interpretation. And we had this prophetic banter, so to say. The prophetic word came, the Lord says, new sets of dragons are released into this, the, the earth and into Nigeria in, in, in particular. And the Lord is saying, raise me dragon slayers. As the word was going forth, the Lord began to inspire me to understand that there are three kinds of dragons being released in this season. And that there is a particular sword given to us as dragon slayers to deal with them. And here the young prophet was given the same vision that he saw a set of swords standing erect on his mattress in a vision and the lord was saying this is the sword for the dragon slayers and he says specifically to the arrowhead of page master apostolic center that will be me to train people to become dragon slayers so that is the origin of this uh series that we are doing uh, i will share the prophetic interpretation as we go on and uh, scriptural and biblical patterns and instructions that we can use to ensure that this word comes to pass in our life that you and i can become effective and powerful dragon slayers so our focal scripture will be uh, revelation chapter 12 basically i wouldn't say verse 1 to 6 because we'll only exceed verse 6 as we go on and uh, to properly handle the prophetic word to properly unpack it we're going to answer four questions what are dragons which dragons are we fighting in this season who are dragon slayers and what are our weapons we must identify the weapons that we have if we are going to defeat the dragons that we face so in the book of revelations chapter 12 verse 3 in particular gives us an interesting focus on what these dragons are the bible says and another sign appeared in heaven behold a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on its heads this is very reminiscent of uh possessing canaan land deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 tells us that when the lord your god brings you into the land which you are going to possess and has cast out many nations before you the Hittites, the Gegashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. Seven nations greater and mightier than you. Those words are key. Greater and mightier than you. That is what a dragon is. A dragon is an enemy, an opposition that is greater and mightier than you. It's not a personal battle. It's not the little uh, things we call personal demons that we struggle with. This is something that is considered greater and mightier than you. This is something that takes all of your strength and still you are not able to, to surmount the victory. So we're going to discuss and identify some of these dragons that are prevalent in this season that the enemy wants to use in an attempt to stop what God wants to do. But we know that the enemy has already failed. Amen. Our duty is now to enter into the position of grace that God has provided for us so that we can have the victory. So, uh, looking at this scripture, we understand that a dragon is something that is mightier and greater than us. So, who are dragon slayers? So, going back to Revelation chapter 12, we look at from verse 1, we will see what a dragon slayer is. So, the Bible says here, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head a gallant of 12 stars and being with child she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth and another sign appeared in heaven that's where the dragon came in so what does it what's the dragon here to do but verse 4 tells us he still drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child that is the aim of the dragon 
he wants to devour the child of the woman as soon as it is born the bible says she bought a male child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron and her child was cut up to god and his throne amen we'll stop here and jump to verse 7. verse 7 now says and war broke out in heaven michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail that's the dragon and his angels did not prevail nor was there place found for them in heaven any longer so the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan who deceives the whole world he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him we'll stop here and then just try and see some insight here so what we see here about the dragon slayer the dragon slayer is actually the woman she's clothed in the sun he has the moon under her feet and she's crowned with 12 stars and the bible says she is pregnant with a child and she's in labor pains she's traveling she's agonizing she's pushing to bring forth a child and that child is the object of the dragon's obsession he wants to strike the child and kill it that is the the total aim of this dragon and that is what the enemy always seeks to do in us its entire goal in our life is to snuff out the manifestation of christ in us so a dragon slayer is someone who can travel until he sees the manifestation of christ in a situation that's where a dragon slayer is if you notice something interesting here number one the woman who was traveling in bed did not physically or directly attack the dragon but yet she defeated the dragon she had no personal input and yet the dragon was defeated secondly you notice that the dragon although he wanted the baby in the womb of the woman he could not approach the woman why is that why not just devour the woman and, and her child why wait for the child to be born before he pounces on the child this is instructive it tells us something strategic about the dragon slayer and the dragon so what do we see about the dragon and the dragon slayer why is the dragon not attacking number one the woman is clothed in the sun that glory is untouchable the enemy can touch it but as for the woman because she's traveling to give birth to that child that sacred child all of heaven's resources is released to her aid if you're going to become a dragon slayer you must learn what it means to travel in prayer that is the core of a dragon slayer i call it the posture of a dragon slayer the book of galatians chapter 4 verse 19 tells us what it means to travel paul was speaking there he says my children in whom i am again in bed pangs in travails until what christ is formed in you remember the woman was in travails for a child to be born who will rule the nations with the rod of iron of course that child is jesus christ and here paul is saying the same thing he is in travails for the church in galatia that christ may be formed in them it's that prayer and labor that energy that is expended as we are pursuing the return of christ as we are pursuing the revelation of christ and the manifestation of christ if you're not doing that in your place of prayer you have not yet become a dragon slayer a dragon slayer doesn't pay lip service to the thing of prayer it's not that kind of prayer where he does say, oh father i thank you in jesus name amen no there is a busting foot of sweat before christ went to calvary at gethsemane he was sweating while praying because he was in agony those are the travails of prayer we see the same story uh, repeated in colossians 4 12 paul was talking about a prayer warrior named epaphras who is one of you a bond servant of christ he greets you always laboring fervently for you in prayers look at the word labor that is bed pangs again when the woman is in labor pain he is laboring fervently in prayers why is he laboring that way that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of god and that is the posture of a dragon slayer a dragon slayer is that person who travels and birds i will not share a testimony in uh confirmation of this thought i remember some time ago one of my disciples uh shared with us a travail she was having she had cysts in her breast and there was fear of cancer there was fear of growth of some kind she went to the doctor to extract it out and it reoccurred again and then we prayed and it reoccurred after the prayer and then i realized this is not a thing for just praying a prayer 
of agreement, the prayer of travail. And I went all night praying. Going from hour to hour praying to ensure just one thing, that this cyst disappears and never reoccurs again. And to the glory of God, it's been almost a year now, it has never reoccurred. The Lord took it out and it never reoccurred. That is the glory of God. That is what it means to travail in breath until Christ they form. That is the posture of a dragon warrior. As we go on now in this series, we'll talk about more parallels that this dragon represents and more of the weapons that we use in fighting this dragon. Until next time, keep the fire burning. In Jesus' name, Amen.